Portable azimuth elevation operation is facilitated by my Yesu G5400B rotor system. At the foundation is a heavy duty tripod which is easy to deploy. My quick set Hercules 5302 aluminum tripod came equipped with a geared elevator and dolly wheels that I used for many years with my Barber Boom camera system. I did not utilize the center column elevator, so I had it removed and a custom aluminum collar installed to add rigidity to the boom and mounting plate. At that time, three hooks were added to provide a way to hang video equipment, batteries, and cables. The Hercules tripod with elevator, manufactured in Skokie, Illinois, was sold in the 1960s for about $200. It weighs less than 20 pounds, yet yields a serviceable load rating of 65 pounds. The primary market for Quickset products saw use in television, film, industrial, and educational applications. Today, telescopes, surveillance cameras, and other industrial uses add to the versatility of the design and can be found new from Moog Sensor and Surveillance Systems of Northbrook, Illinois. I found a few used models being offered on eBay for around $500. The Mitchell plate found on my Hercules tripod has its origins in 1920 when the film industry giant Mitchell Camera Corporation put it into use. Since that time, the Mitchell plate has become a standard method for mounting camera heads to tripods, dollies, cranes, sliders, and a multitude of other camera mounting systems. The Mitchell plate design allows for a clamping nut to be used to fasten down a camera head. A castle nut and threaded collar is normally fitted to the plate riser or camera head. A keyway is slotted into the plate to provide registration and a secure method to limit rotation of the head. For my use in azimuth elevation applications, I determined it is desirable to mount the azimuth rotor to the heavy duty tripod using the Mitchell plate. However, an adapter is necessary. I asked Bruce, N9BLU, to manufacture the adapter. He owns and operates Resource Engineering and Machine in Osceola, Wisconsin a custom milling and fabrication shop, and has been a family friend going back to the 1970s. The process began with a drawing of the adapter. This drawing was then translated into a 3D CAD machining program, MasterCam, to then generate the milling information files necessary. Bruce chose 6061 aluminum alloy for the project. A surplus one inch thick piece was selected and roughed into the appropriate size using the bandsaw. Bruce mounted this raw stock to the bed of his CNC mill using clamps on opposite corners. The material was situated so the center was located over one of the slotted openings in the bed allowing the adapter to be secured during later operations. Back at the computer, the tool selections were made along with cutting path information. Once organized, Bruce was able to simulate the cutting steps by visualizing a model of the adapter and tools to be used. A file was generated by the computer, which got loaded into the mill. Bruce used a list of the tools needed and organized them in the sequence which they would be used during cutting. Next, he set up each of the tools by indicating them in relation to the surface of the mill bed. This tells the mill the limits of the tool's z-axis, which is usually a couple thousands up from the bed so as not to cut too deep. The first tool, a drill, was mounted in the mill. A hole near the outer rim of the adapter was cut and will be threaded later. A socket head cap screw will be fastened and used as an index locator in the Mitchell plate. The next tool, a larger drill, was then mounted. This tool cut the four mounting holes as well as a pilot hole for the center clamp bolt. Next, the counter bore holes were cut in each of the four locations using an end mill. 
The socket head cap screws, which fasten the adapter to the bottom of the rotor, fit neatly into the counter bores. After that operation, it was time to remove some of the material to reveal a step which mates to the Mitchell plate. A roughing end mill entered the material, cut the circumference, then exited before the next cutting operation. This continued until the appropriate amount of material was removed. Both the inner radius and outer radius of the adapter were cut during this operation. Several successive cuts were made, each a little deeper. Once this step was completed, the roughing mill was replaced by an end mill. A pass was made around the outer and inner circumference to leave a finished surface exactly to specifications. With the inner dimension cut, it was time to inspect the progress and get ready to cut the outside dimensions of the adapter. This meant reclamping the part to the mill bed. A bolt placed through the center hole was used to clamp the material. Once tightened, the part was properly secured. This allowed the two clamps to be removed, revealing the outside diameter of the adapter to the next cutting operations. The roughing mill cutting tool was again mounted into the drive spindle. Material was then removed from the outer portion of the part through several passes. Bruce continued to monitor the progress of the cutting operation, something he has done for many, many years while making parts for his customers. Finally, it was time for the finishing cut to be made. This meant changing out the roughing mill to an end mill. The material remaining in each of the four corners was torn off from the adapter. The next segment of the milling program was then executed. This final pass left a beautiful, clean surface around the outside of the adapter. Now complete, the chips were swept away and the mill bed cleaned up. Bruce removed the center hold-down bolt and released the adapter from the mill. Now, on to the finishing steps. Bruce moved the adapter over to his manual mill to first thread the M5 screw hole. Then, a quick deburring was done on both sides, which allows easy installation of the socket head cap screw. The next operation is to thread the adapter for the 3 quarter inch bolt used to secure the rotor to the tripod. Since this is a heavier cutting operation, Bruce needed to secure the adapter to the mill bed. Small aluminum spacers are used between the clamps and the part to protect the finish. A custom adapter was used to mount the 3 quarter 10 tap. This size tap requires a special cutting fluid specifically made for aluminum. This hole was deburred as well. The bolt easily threaded into the adapter. Bruce then used a hand deburring tool to clean up the edges of the counter bore holes. The adapter was test fit to the Mitchell plate. Not completely satisfied with the finish of the adapter, Bruce decided to use his lathe to chamfer the edges. To accommodate the size of the part, the jaws on the lathe needed to be changed out. Each of the six jaws are removed and then replaced in sequence. The adapter was then mounted in the lathe and secured tightly. A cutting tool was used to chamfer the edge. Scotch-Brite was then pressed against the adapter, revealing a nice clean surface.
Now, the part was turned around so the opposite side edges could receive a chamfer as well. Bruce then used his pad of Scotch-Brite to clean up the remaining surfaces. The part gleamed. Nicely done. The last step was to test mount the newly manufactured adapter to the rotor before it goes to be anodized. Each of the four M8 socket head cap screws were inserted and lightly tightened. The rotor was set on the Mitchell plate, indexing it using the M5 screw head. Next, Bruce used the 3 quarter inch bolt to fasten the adapter to the tripod. All went well and it looks great. A special thanks to Bruce and 9BLU for his experience and manufacturing talents.